Hello friends and welcome. Today I have another great Sitecore CDP and personalized topic for you. My name is Dylan Young, Developer Advocate at Sitecore, working with the Engagement Cloud of Products, which includes today's topic on Sitecore CDP and Personalize. We are going to walk through a manual exercise of triggering the complete flow of a web experiment using Postman. So specifically, I will demonstrate the following today. We'll go through a browser ref or session create process. This is typically facilitated by the Sitecore CDP JavaScript library if you're using the browser. Then we'll log a simple page view event for the home page. So essentially what we're mimicking is that somebody has just come to our home page and now we want to trigger this view event. I've shared how to do this via the browser in a previous video. Then once we have triggered that view event, we're gonna take a look at our experiment specifically in the dashboard and take a look at what, what we're trying to achieve today. Once we have done that, we're gonna trigger that flow event via the Postman collection. In the Sitecore CDP JavaScript library, this would happen automatically. So once you publish a flow, an experiment or an experience, then automatically that would show up via your website. Then we'll trigger another view event. The purpose of this is to, tr to trigger our goal for our experiment, uh, which we'll use later to determine which experiment is, or which variant of the experiment is, is performing the best. Then we'll close the session using Postman. So this is pretty simple, just a command or a, a request that we can send in to close the session. Another option is just the wait to the timeout hits for the session based on the point of sale that we specified. Then lastly, we'll look at the guest profile via the dashboards and take a look to see what kind of, uh, what kind of events were triggered while, during their session. And then we'll take a look um, at the experiments dashboards, the operational dashboard to see the different events that were triggered as well. So let's go ahead and jump into our demonstration. Hello friends, it's Dylan here. I hope you're enjoying today's content, but please don't forget to subscribe. That way you don't miss out on any of the future upcoming content that we're releasing on other Sitecore topics. Also, if you haven't done so already, you should definitely like this video. This helps others find the video in the YouTube algorithm. And so with that, Thank you, and let's get back to the video. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump in. So like I previously mentioned, the first part of this is going to be creating that browser ref. So to do that, I'm gonna jump into Postman, which I have open right now. And I have a few different collections. We're not gonna really cover Sitecore Send today. We're gonna to be talking about Sitecore CDP and Personalize. And then I have a, a bunch of different collections here. Obviously in other videos, I'm gonna talk about other uh, APIs that are available to you. But we're, today we're talking about the stream APIs or real-time APIs. So I have a bunch of different request options that are present here. But today, uh, specifically for right now, we're gonna talk about creating that browser ref. And essentially, like I said, this is like creating a session. So let's click on this item. And this request is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're just calling into the version 1.2 browser create uh, a request, and we're passing in our client key, which is a public client key. So anybody uh, that's using the browser can see that client key that's uh, used, as well as we um, are going to send in a message. In this case, the message is going to be blank to create that uh, browser ref. So let's go ahead and click that and create it real quick. One thing that this does with Postman I have set up is I have a test, which basically is kind of a, after the test has, or after this request has run, it stores the browser ref to my uh, environment variables. So once, once we have that back, one thing we can do is jump over to our CDP personalized tenant. This is a CDP and a personalized tenant, so a Smart Hub solution. And so it has both products inside of it. If we click on guest, which is a CDP specific feature, 
what we can do is take that browser reference ID, which is this ref right here that we got back when we ran that. And we can search just like we would if this was a browser, we can get the BID, which is the browser ID, and we can paste it in. And now we have this uh, reference and we can click on that. And now I want to track this. So last scene today, obviously, this is the one I just sent in. Um, and I'm gonna take a look at the timeline of this. So we're not gonna worry about that right yet, uh, but we're gonna, as we start interacting with the Postman collections, we're gonna take a look as the uh, interactions timeline updates. Once we have that done, the next step is we wanted to trigger a view event. So that's pretty quick, pretty easy to do. I have a track web view event uh, request here in Postman. So if I click on that, I use a pre-request script to kind of bundle up all of our JSON data and we're gonna pass it as a get request in the query string. So that's the reason we're, we need to package it up first before we send it. So it removes all the special characters and things like that. Um, so we're, we're basically pulling from our environment variables, our browser ref that we just created. We're also pulling our point of sale. In this case, uh, Dylan dev is what my point of sale is on this tenant. And then we're also pulling the client key, which is stored in environment variable as well. And then we're taking the channel, which is a web, uh, web event essentially that we're wanting to fire. We're using language of English, currency of USD, passing in the point of sale. And then for this view event, I just want to pass in a home event or the mimic the home page as well as the browser ID, client key, and we're passing a view event. And it just basically bundles it up and codes it and then uh, puts it into a message variable that we then use as a parameter in this Postman collection. So then if I send this, so then if we go back on over to our CP personalized tenant in the guest uh, guests view, we can refresh. And now we have an open session. Now what's to note about an open session is it means it's open, meaning it's currently active. Once it's you know, once you, we close that session, it's going to be called a browse that session and not open any longer. So this is currently active and it's tracking that it's in the web channel. Um, so as you can see, we have an event triggered for this session of homepage. And so that's great. It's like this users come in and viewed the homepage. Now we want to trigger our flow. Uh, in this case, it's a experiment that we're triggering. So let's take a look at that experiment before we jump into triggering it real quick. So if we click on over to experiments, click on web. And then once we load that, we'll click on the experiment with Postman uh, experiment that I created. So a few things to note about this is I want to take a look at the build first. And so this is how we've defined this web experiment. So we have a control group, which is original. It really doesn't return a whole lot of information. Um, we're using, we're reusing our featured blog post that we used in our previous uh, creating a web experience. So it's not quite related to our specific use case for an experiment. So what we get back from the API is not, not that useful, honestly. We basically just get back a browser reference, which we don't really need. Uh, would it be useful is to have a little bit different information for uh, customizing this experiment, this specific experiment based on the variant that it returns. But we've split up the traffic between all three uh, fairly equally. I would say, obviously, when you're doing 33s and a third, you're going to have one that has to be a little bit higher. Um, and then the last thing I defined is a goal for this. And that's why we're going to trigger that page view event after we trigger the flow. And so what this says is that this goal will be triggered when we hit this URL or when we log this view event in with the Postman API. And we set this to published. So it's active. And so we can call this, we call this via the friendly ID. So once you create this, you'll have a friendly ID. In this case, experiment with Postman, it's all lowercase, that's the friendly ID. And so we can call it via API using that. And then there's a few other tabs that we'll talk about in a second. I don't want Mike's, Mike's um, 
my session to die while I'm explaining this. So let's go back on over to Postman real quick. And now we're going to trigger a flow event or flow execution. Flows is just a kind of higher level definition for an experiment or an experience. It's just a kind of developers uh, of CDP and personalized is called those flows. And then there's differentiation in the UI and other aspects that are specific to if it's an experiment or if it's a experience. So let's run that experiment. And just like before, I have a pre request script that basically bundles everything together that we're sending. We're sending a channel, a language, a currency code, a point of sale, the browser ID, client ID, all the same things that we had before. We're just now passing in that friendly ID and we're obviously calling V2 call flows. So I'll go ahead and click send. Like I said, because we're using that web experience template that we used previously in a, another video, all it returns in that API tab is the guest ref, which isn't particularly useful here. Um, but now that we have that, we can jump back to the customer data's guest page. And let's just take a look at how this has changed. We'll need to pass in the BID again, which hopefully is still the same. So I didn't copy something else. And if we go back to this page, we go to a timeline. We still have that open session and it doesn't, for some reason, didn't show the flow in here, but I could, there's another dashboard we'll show in a second that shows those executions of those flows. But before we're done with this, we actually want to trigger the goal completion for this web experiment. So to do that, we actually have to trigger, as we previously showed, the experiment has a goal of when you go to a specific page that attracts a goal to that experiment, whichever variant that it uh, has selected for this specific session that will trigger a goal for that specific variant and then that will help determine which one is the winner down the road um, so to do that uh, we're just going to go back to our tracking web view event and in this time i want to specify in the pre-request i want to specify a different url i'm going to specify campaign and that's the URL that we specify is the goal page. And we'll go ahead and click send. And that's our response. Um, so let's go back on over to Sitecore CDP and personalize or the CDP guests profile page and refresh the interactions timeline. And now if we click the view session details, we can see that the view, they viewed the uh, slash campaign page or the API, I triggered them to view the campaign page. So that's it for that. Let's, uh, the last thing I need to do now is I need to kill the session or end the session or, or close the session, however you wanna uh, say that. So I have another endpoint over here, you, similar to some of the other endpoints, but we're gonna pass in a very specialized uh, message for this. and. All we're really needing to do is, is provide this force close option. And then we provide all the other details that we had previously. And so we'll do a send. And so once that is returned, we'll just refresh over here in Cycler CDP's interaction timeline. And now we should see that it's a browsed session, basically meaning that the set, this session, this specific session has ended. The session duration was six minutes. So fairly quick, but if we go to, if we go to the experiments page and the web interface here and we view our experiment, we can get a little bit more detail about the experiment as it has run. So we can go to the experiment with postman page. That's our experiment that we were running. And then once we're on this page, the performance tab would show up once we once this experiment has run for longer than 24 hours at this point i scheduled this this morning so it hasn't been 24 hours yet but the operational tab is a, a tab page where it will show everything that's happening all the flows that have tr been triggered of this specific experiment in the last 15 seconds so it keeps updating fairly regularly and so 
you can see our web experiment that we triggered via that flow API. We have a successful execution. This is the one, it's return back variant one. I didn't know that because my browser ref or the, the API response is, is kind of vague of which actual variant is firing. But you can see actually, as I sit on this page, the it's kind of ticking along because every 15 seconds it's updating what's here. Um, what's great is that it will show you failed executions. If something fails with your experiment for some reason, this will show those failures. Uh, in this case, we didn't have any failures. That's good. The demo gods are good to us. Um, and then the executions average duration, this tells you, this is something we're actually gonna cover a little bit more in my next video uh, coming up on performance. Uh, it's important to keep your performance of your experiments and your experiences at a certain threshold. And so this helps you kind of get a better understanding of how long it takes for an experiment to run um, in terms of the server performance to re return your API response. And then this also down here is showing that we've triggered some goals. So we have now triggered a goal because they've visited those campaign pages. So that's pretty much it uh, for this. And uh, this concludes today's topic and I'll see you next time.